our meeting, we're going to be looking at um, just kind of getting organized for the school year. So looking at our annual agenda, looking at our monitoring report schedule, um, figuring out our board budget, which I realized that I didn't gather. I can tell you. You, you know the amount that we had last year. And then, um, so that's kind of going to be the focus of our meeting. And then uh, we, we are at this point going to continue to choose a meeting evaluator. So that's always the first one of the first things. Chelsea did it last time. Do we have a uh, person who would like to uh, do the meeting do evaluation? And I, do you, Linda, do you have the yep. options? All right, so Ashley is going to do that. And then um, we're going to open it up for public comment. And Paul Parsons had emailed me saying he might be here to, to um, talk about the health care negotiations with the union. And I told him he would have three minutes. <laughs> Maybe he just, he's um, the driver ed teacher oh, at the high school it. here. Um, and it's been, been very, very quiet. Um, I know they reached in pass. Um, I think they went to mediation. Um, it was, there hasn't been a lot of info yeah. about it flowing around. And, so. and I reminded them that, you know, the VSBA also sends us little updates on that as well. So. Um, so I guess we don't have any other public comment. Well, I actually have you a have couple. A, no, a well, hat on for public comment? Is it well, actually, it's, it comes more from uh, my, my parent hat on than a yeah. board hat, so I figured yeah. that's a yeah. so, good time to do it. Um, I didn't know if the board was aware that the high school does not have a biology class any longer. And that the science classes do not have labs. So, um, I found that in the colleges are still requesting those specific courses with labs, and the uh, high school doesn't offer them with labs. They have the block scheduling, but it's not that extended time frame. But I just, as a parent, that's something I thought the board should know because I've talked with the principals and stuff, but. Uh, I would like that to be and, known and by what everyone did, here. Did, oh, I, we're we're we just can't supposed to listen, right? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Can't make, can't make any comments. All right. So, um, and then I did have one question for Lane. I was wondering if the district uses critical race theory in curriculum or training for the teachers. Do, do you have an understanding of what critical race theory is? Uh, and, the, and I was just asking the question. Yeah, so critical race theory um, is a series of legal briefs intended for graduate students. So no. Okay. That doesn't say that, um, you know, some of the things that they might discuss in their social justice group, you know, might not touch on some of the same topics, but no, critical race theory is not. Okay. Anyone else have their community member hat on and want to speak? All right. Okay, so the, the next thing on our agenda is to talk about our board education needs in light of our training from last um, July. Um, so, um, and we struggled a little bit in the in when we were putting the agenda together because you will notice here that the agenda looks a little bit different. The meeting agenda is looking a little bit different and that was um, our attempt to sort of get things organized so that we're focusing on what our board needs to be focusing on and not getting um, sidetracked on, on things that are not really in our board uh, area. So. Um, anyway, um, one of the things as we look ahead for this school year is 
what are some areas and what I thought we might do is just take you know maybe 10 minutes or so and just kind of brainstorm some areas where board members feel like I would like to know a little bit more about this or um, you know from the training I'd like to know a little bit more about how monitoring works or what have you so um, do we have some I have some if you want I have some areas that I feel like i I would like to get some additional training in um, do you want to hear my what, what I'm thinking yes. okay so um, there are a couple of things especially um, as we try and make sure that we're not stepping on Lane's toes is just um, being clear about what our board is legally responsible for so maybe just having like a you know like a 20 minute presentation of you know these are the things by law and then looking at our policies and making sure that um, we've covered those in the policies that we currently have um, so that was one of the things that I was thinking might be helpful because then everybody's kind of on the same page and can have an understanding not that we're going to understand all of education law but sort of the sort of the big things that we um, need to be responsible for and making sure that our policies cover those that was one of the things that I was thinking we could use some training on does that get anybody else thinking Rachel, you can come right here. Uh oh. I, just, I have a bunch of unvaccinated kids at home. Oh, okay. So we are talking about uh, education needs for the board. I mean, I, I kind of, my, um, I feel like we just came off of a lot of education from this previous. Uh, seminar that we did for um, our board retreat so my preference would be to make sure that we are addressing what we just learned um, and then maybe seeing if there's areas in that where questions arise before mm -hmm. we just before we move on to just to education in another area but take what we did process that work on the aspects from that um, mm -hmm. from that training and really do the work that we had kind of discussed and, and started in upon um, at that retreat before we kind of move on to learning something else. Um, that would be my preference. So follow-up trainings to... I wouldn't even say follow-up trainings. Or, or I would just, I, I feel like I, personally, I'm, I feel um, at this point doing the work that we learned about in that mm -hmm. meeting before we move into more training and potentially mm -hmm. seeing where there are holes as we're doing that work that come to light for us. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe not, you know, transitioning again to, to another another training cycle. So, so help me understand. So, uh, so I, I guess bottom line is I feel like we just did the training Mm -hmm. um, we did an online course, we had the seminar, so I'd like to see us, um, I'd like to see us do some work from, from what we learned there first. I see. And then see mm -hmm. if there's gaps in that knowledge that we gained there that we need to fill in moving forward. Okay. I don't so, think there's anything that particularly stands out to me right now as saying, oh, I, I really want to have this training. Mm -hmm. I want to do a little bit of that work first. Okay. So sort of implementing what we've learned yeah. and then seeing, oh, we don't really understand what we're doing when we try and do this yeah. because we're going to have an ends report coming up shortly so do we are we understanding how we're monitoring that and and 
of it working the way we want it to. And that would be related to some concerns that people might have too. So, um, So maybe we, we do we want to just table this for now? Are other folks feeling sort of like gotcha, like let's try and try some of these things that we learned about in the training and then sort of figure out as we go along what we really might need feedback. more? I mean, there was a lot of information that came that was new. I mean, I can speak for myself, to me, you know, and I think if we even were able to dive into some of those broad topics again and mm -hmm. That could be the meat of an agenda at each topic for quite a few months. Mm -hmm. And because mm -hmm. I see here that you talk about the creation of an ownership linkage plan, which was part of that education, which perhaps we need to talk more in depth about before we start. Before we start actually the doing the plan. Yeah. yeah. Just to make yeah. sure that there's um, agreement among the board right. on what that means how to move forward. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, and uh, just to tag on to that, the reminded me when we had our um, we spoke in our agenda meeting we did talk about potentially looking back on some of the topics that were covered in that training mm -hmm. and saying like okay next meeting we're going to talk about ownership linkage would you mind reviewing that one section so we can have a little bit more of an in-depth conversation about it so I think we still have these materials till December I believe December 1st yeah let's work yeah. on the stuff that we've already just had that and really delve into that first mm -hmm. Okay, so um, are we all sort of in agreement that that might be the best way to to manage this at at this point? Because as we as as Katya and I put together the agenda, part of what we're trying to do is sort of have part of our meetings be board education, and that's okay for us to use that this board meeting time to kind of get ourselves on track in terms of uh, up to speed with how we're going to be using these policies and whether or not these policies are working for us or not. So um, so we'll just, we'll work with that kind of as, as we kind of evaluate maybe how this meeting goes and how uh, as we hit some of the stuff that we need to do. Um, like the ownership linkage plan, which is the next thing um, on the agenda, um, is is to talk about creating an ownership linkage plan. But again, even as Katja was saying, how are people feeling about their understanding of what an owner ownership linkage plan is, and are we even ready to create one at this point? ourselves to look at that part of the agenda and that would be our trigger to because okay. this is a missed opportunity I should when I was reading through the agenda I should have stopped and said oh wait I should review all of that so I can come and have a discussion about it so mm -hmm. that's on me this time but now I know every agenda there's going to be a part that links to uh, I mean and, and another thing we could do is next month talk about the the ownership linkage and then say 
make the plans for the next one mm -hmm. at that time so mm -hmm. that we can mm -hmm. have the whole month to review and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like get back up to speed yeah. from what we had right. uh, did trained on before because I would have to review it to mm -hmm. make any comments. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, right. I feel like, I know we're testing out this new agenda, um, but potentially, and I know we get our, our um, packet from Linda, um, but maybe on that packet there needs to be a line that just says, like, please make sure you review X, Y, and Z prior to the meeting along with your agenda mm -hmm. packet um, so that we're all coming. Ready together. and prepared. Right, yeah. right. I'm just curious, was everybody, and I don't want you to feel on the spot, but was everybody at least able to get eventually through the whole set of modules, or are we still, or are some people still getting caught caught up? Because, I mean, it was in the summer, and... Um, I am definitely not caught up. Okay. Summer's still um, catching up, too. Okay. Well, and this might provide a great opportunity, rather than having to go through the whole thing, and like, okay... Let's focus, focus on, on this session. one, right, right, right. Although I would encourage you to, to kind of try to get at least through it once, all the way through. And, and those board, the board exercises where they ask you the questions at the end, I don't know, but for me, that really like slowed me way down. Yeah. I was just like, ah. Um, so if you just skip those, you can skip those. And that way you can at least you get that sort of the broad overview and then you can then we can come back through and and sort of narrow in and focus on one section at a time. Well, and those questions might inform how we structure our conversation about it. I mean, that's what they're for. Right. 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 Either type them or talk about them. So. Right. Um, right. Why start from scratch? They gave us questions. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, because I think I think even in the training, if I remember around ownership, we were all sort of, who are our owners? Mm -hmm. Do we even really know? And that's before you even start an ownership mm -hmm. linkage right. plan. You got to kind of know who who are our owners. So, um, and then and then and then reaching out to them. So, um, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna kind of table that till the next um, meeting. Um, so the next meeting we will be talking about the owner state. And right. and yeah, okay. and kind of reviewing who the owners are, and then okay. creating, and maybe beginning to think about creating a plan because that whole module will talk about you know, um, creating a plan, and then I think as we go through the annual agenda part of this agenda, you're, we're going to kind of see the things that we're going to be doing. Um, in terms of the the tasks that are that are ahead for us on that we need to be to be dealing with and then um, in the training too if I don't if, if I remember correctly we had talked about even looking at our policies because yeah. they hadn't been looked at since 2016 so Let's take a look at, let's understand what they are, let's take a look at them, let's see if they're still, you know, doing what, what we want them to do and how are we monitoring them. And the whole monitoring part is the, how, you're, how we'll be holding uh, Lane accountable, ourselves accountable, so um, kind of understanding how that whole process um, works as well, I think will, will make a difference. Um, all right. So how are we going to do that? We're going to look at that every meeting, a section of it. I mean, so I think it's only 27 pages or something. Isn't it kind of short? Right. But each policy is pretty, they're pretty thick. Yeah. I mean, they're short, but they're thick. Yeah. Um, and, and so one of the things, though, so you'll notice that um, we do have two monitoring uh, reports that we're just reviewing so that means so normally you you've been with us since last March right yes. so we get the two policy yep. um, monitoring reports from Lane that's sort of our first they come in the packet so that's sort of our first run through and then um, so one of the other things that 
that we might all want to do is just go back to the module on monitoring in the training that talks about how do you monitor a monitoring report? Like, what is the purpose? What are you trying to do? Um, and Katya and I were also wondering if the board at that time might want to, after we've done the monitoring, look at the actual policy. Because remember, when we do the monitoring report, he, he puts it together. As long as he's got a reasonable interpretation of the policy, then, and he provides the, the evidence, of it there's no real we can't then change the policy and say wait a minute we won't accept this monitoring report because you didn't you didn't you know interpret it the way we wanted to so if there's room in that policy where where we're like wait a minute um, you know or if it becomes clear as you're as you're as you're looking at his monitoring report like wait a minute you know he's how how He's, he's interpreted it, and it's, and it's a reasonable interpretation, but we need to be more specific so that he is um, providing us the evidence that, and the interpretation that we're actually looking for. So that's our way of, of sort of curtailing his latitude in terms of what he can and cannot do. So that would be set for the next time. Yeah, yeah, so the first time, you know, today we're just, it's just, he'll tell us briefly, you know, these are the two monitoring reports I did, they're in your packet. Um, but then it's really at the next meeting that we need to, as each individual member, look at that monitoring report and say, is this a reasonable interpretation of the policy? And well, do we have the we evidence? Need to have looked at the policies. Yeah. I think we're a little bit putting the cart because we we don't want them to run parallel to each other. We don't want to put Lane through putting together a monitoring report and then realize, oh wait, this policy doesn't really represent this anymore. So I think we really need to prioritize separate from the monitoring report. Not that that doesn't have to happen as well, but if if one of the things we took from that training is we need to look at these policies one by one and make sure that they still work for us and still represent us. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we should wait until it's being interpreted by Lane to decide that. Well, That's gonna um, be a lot what, of work. One of the things that we kind of discussed was, um, kind of as you said, but making sure that we have the, um, my words are not working today, guys, I'm so sorry. Making sure that we are looking at them in a way that it makes sense so that we have that reflection, as you're kind of saying. So um, we're reviewing the policy, we're taking a deep look at it, we're taking a look at what the um, PL report is, mm -hmm. and we're saying, are these actually matching up? What, they're matching what they're supposed to be matching from policy to PL report, mm -hmm. but are they actually telling us what we want to know? What in the policy do we need to look at to make sure that we're getting what we want in that PL report? So to do exactly. them in a way that they do um, kind of co-mingle so both of them are fresh on our mind, too. Does that make sense? Yes, so it does confidence. make sense. Thank you. So they have context. Sorry? So they so have context. That's what yeah. I was trying to find. Thank you. So there's <laughs> context to what we're reviewing, and we're, we're taking a little bit more of a careful read-through of both of them and having that discussion around of saying, yes, this reflects what we want to see. The context is here. Everything's coming together. Or we're missing something. What do we need to change in our policy that Lane is actually reporting on what we want to see and where does that change need to be made. Yeah, definitely. Right. Thank you. Right, and because to try and do all of them all at once it just seems oh, and like, like yeah, no, we've, we need, we've we got a bite and since we already each month will be doing two, it's sort of like we'll just, we figured that might be a way to do it. Now, totally open to suggestions if you've got, you know, and if you know, after the meeting, you, you're you thinking and you, you're like, well, hey, wait a minute, maybe, you know, I, I'm totally open to, you know, a, a suggestion for how to do that. Um, but that was sort of what we were, what we were thinking is. I also wonder if after we look at these policies and make adjustments as, as you did, how long So he has, he has some time to, to 
look at the policy and react to it. Right. So that we're not changing it and then saying, actually, you know, this is due next week, but sorry, <laughs> your old interpretation right. of an hour our change policy is no longer valid. Wouldn't it make sense to just do it the next time the policy is looked at? Like change the policy so it's written up a certain way and then I don't know if they're looked at once a year? So that's so then next year it would be the new so yeah. right? So the the policies um, typically they look especially the limitations are looking backwards in time at the previous year um, and so typically what would happen if you change the policy um, I have two responsibilities uh, when that happens I either have to be in compliance with it or my responsibility is to tell the board when it will be in compliance um, and yeah, if that makes right. sense. or if we if we change it we could just ask him can you can you give us your interpretation your reasonable interpretation of this because then we could adjust it before he starts going through the whole process of trying to you know find the evidence that's gonna that's gonna back up uh, that policy and one of the things on our agenda for for tonight too is just creating a, a monitoring schedule so we have a monitoring schedule when we do each of these policies um, and part of creating your monitoring schedule is you can say how frequent and we uh, if you remember from the training if we have a concern we can always ask him for a monitoring report at any time we need to give him enough time to get it together but if we had an issue or something that we were like well we really want to take a look at this um, we could say you know in the next meeting we would like to see your monitoring report on this so um, but I think what's going to be difficult in in doing it this way is just one we are we're evaluating his monitoring report on the current policy and so he either interprets it and and the interpretation is a reasonable per person's interpretation and he's provided the evidence to support that and then the second part is to then look at the actual policy in light of that to say hmm do, is this really what we want it to be saying because we can't change the policy and then say, hey, now your monitoring, now your report is incorrect. Right. Um, and this is and a process, not. too. I think we all, you know, this is not, we're not going to have all these, it's going to take time right. to keep doing them. So it sounds like, you know, I think we, I think we have kind of the basis of, um, I mean, I don't want to, but we do need to kind of keep moving through our, our agenda as well. I think we're already getting a little hot okay. on this yep. topic. All right. All right, so um, so we are at six thirty-four. So, do you want to briefly tell us about the two monitoring yeah. reports, um, or have people looked and, at them already? And I think it's important for um, folks also to know um, that there are two binders in central office. Um, when I can, I try to like you know put quotes and or, or incorporate the stuff right into the report. Sometimes it's it's there's stuff that's evidence that's in addition to. They are in those binders. They're there for anybody to come in and take a look. In this particular case, because um, you know EL policy 2.0, the global constraints really deals with um, the fact that I'm ensuring the organization and kind of the constituents are behaving appropriately. Um, there are things in there that talk about um, kind of personnel matters and things like that. So those are confidential. Another reason to keep them in the binder in the, the central office. But those things are always open to the board um, to kind of take a look at. So EL, EL 2.0, um, in kind of summary and interpretation of it, again, it's really about my responsibility to make sure that the organization as a whole, as well as all the members that make it up, are, are behaving appropriately. Um, in kind of a general summary. Um, executive limitation 2.8, get my bearings here, communication and support to the board. This is an important one um, for the board because it's, it's really about ensuring that you guys are getting the information you need to make effective policy decisions. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're getting it, it's in a format that's understandable, that's clear, that makes sense. Um, and so those are what those two are about in general. Yeah. So this is one, too, in 2.8, um, 
in the past we've had him provide the evidence but this is one where in the future if we want we could say um, you know as a board we're gonna have someone on the board look at that evidence um, in terms of the communication that we've received from the superintendent so that could be where a board member does sort of a direct inspection looking back at emails looking at you know issues that have come up um, and evaluating whether or not um, we've got the evidence that supports his interpretation so he would still interpret the policy but we would provide the evidence and look at the evidence all right so I just have a question about sure that. yep so if someone wants to do that what do they do go back to the through the emails like talk to people in the offices like talk to the principals like what well this is um, so EL 2.8 is the information that, that you folks receive this one should uh, pretty much be a pretty easy one to do because most of that information happens right here over the course of the year um, in the board meetings I mean I send emails out to the board as well you know if there's something critical that looks like it, it's happening that you know might cause you know questions to arise in the community that you might encounter um, but I think this is a, a pretty easy one you know when you were when you're called upon to, to make a, a policy decision um, you know do you have what you need to comfortably make that decision um, And you would be looking for evidence that supports the interpretation that he's so he would write up the interpretation of that policy and then you would look to see if there's evidence and you always as that. as a board you always have a right you know you can't put in every piece of evidence that that exists around something so like if you go and look at the binder you know there's five or six things in there to keep it brief and to keep it clear um, but if at any point in time you know you feel as a board that hey what you've got in there really doesn't support you know wh what you're saying um, here um, so we'd like to see more we'd like to specifically see this you always have the right to do that right. and it's appro appropriate to do to, to make sure that things are, are, are going the way that they should be and that your superintendent's being honest with you and that would be in the monitoring portion of you know when we're looking at the evidence do we have are, are we are we comfortable that he's he's provided the evidence that the interpretation that he's given us is is uh, is being followed through on any other questions regarding monitoring so for the next meeting again you know looking back at that training on monitoring um, would be really helpful um, and then one of the things that I thought I might do and I and I um, I sort of put a I made a little chart because that's about as good as I am but I may have I may forward it to Linda and she may forward it to you just as a tool to help you think about you know is this interpretation reasonable yes or no is the evidence um, and I forget supportive exactly probably, supportive yeah. of the of um, you know the interpretation and just to kind of help you kind of think about what is it that I'm monitoring when I'm looking at these reports um, it's not oh if I were the superintendent I would have done it this way it's more is this a would a reasonable person um, interpret this in this way and is there evidence that it's that it's happening um, and remember Lane you're you're also sort of operationalizing anything with with like data so it's it should be fairly clear um, when we're looking at the reports okay any other questions on monitoring we'll move on to monitoring the board so the other thing that um, other than Ashley's you know sort of that meeting you know is everybody here and 
are people prepared and and you know are we uh, meeting in a in a um, respectful way is actually looking at our own policies and kind of monitoring uh, those policies and again sort of maybe doing a schedule where we where we monitor the the policies that that govern sort of our 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 procedures and our um, our tasks and then and then um, looking at each of those policies as well to say is it is the policy working for us or do we need to make some changes to it so those would be all the the um, uh, governing policies and the delegation policies So, Katya, you had an idea. Do you remember? I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't actually. Um, are we, I think we talked about setting also just to seeing if we want to set like a schedule for monitoring those because we do have our own governing policies and making sure that we're reading through them, making sure because I think it's a way us also for us as board members to understand and help us. Um, know really understand the role that we have as board members um, and being able to review those on again on like that annual basis and see if there's anything that we are realizing like oh well, we're actually not following this or maybe we have some leeway in this to change that there so um, it was coming up with a schedule for that as well so that we're, we're again doing the work that we kind of set out to do um, at this last retreat and actually going through and making sure that things are kind of as they should be especially since So what I'm curious about, um, would the board be okay with Katja and I sort of saying, okay, you know, we'll review these these policies this meeting. Do you do you want to just delegate that to to Katja and I to sort of put it together? So and the other thing, having um, if I remember from the training also. You know, we could assign like one board member could could do a policy, or do we want to sort of do it as a group? I think having the policy and then bringing it to the group and discussing it and making a decision as a group makes sense. Okay, so more of a rather than assigning an individual yeah. board member, using our meeting yes. using our meeting time to sort of say okay. We're gonna we're gonna tackle these two policies tonight and and look at them, look at you know are we have we been doing this because that's part of it is are we doing what our policies say, and then and then the second part of that um, is looking at is this policy working are there things that we need to change, um, so in, that would be in moving out forward prior. I think um, or like what I'm seeing see. with this new schedule too is that there's work that we need to do um, in our agenda planning meeting to make sure that we are um, notifying board members as like what what we would like to review so that you have a little bit more of a heads up we send, like as I said we send out the agenda packet but also say please come prepared to discuss policy X Y and Z and have reviewed this yeah. portion that's great so we know exactly what we're all doing yeah we're coming yeah, that makes sense. So I'm and I'm happy to come up with a schedule for that if that would be helpful. That would be great. Thank you, Pat. Okay, are we ready to move on to um, so uh, the creation of the monitoring schedule? That is sort of already in our agenda. Our, our, so generally what happens is we just seem to flip through the agenda from year to year and we don't really change anything. 
Um, and we may want to change things. We may want to leave it the same. Um, and again, it seems like folks might want a little more time to think about things before we sort of say, yep, this is good. This is the way we're going to do it. Is, is that um, an accurate read of sort of where, where people are? Even sort of looking at, um, looking at the monitoring schedule that we currently have when you look at the annual agenda. So if you look at the annual agenda, and I, can't, I had to print it large so I could actually see it. Um, uh, you know, we do uh, policies 2.0 and 2.8. We, we get them to review, and then in September, we vote to accept or, or reject. Um, and then the next month, we do 2.1 and 2.2. Uh, we, we get the initial report, and then we accept or reject the following month, and it just goes on and on like that. Um, and the way it is in the annual agenda, for the most part, so one of the things that I was looking at is um, uh, in the board training, one of the things they talked about was um, kind of having a monitoring schedule and and we have one but it's not in a schedule format like um, in the training there was a chart that it that they showed where it was like you know this is the policy this is the frequency of when we're going to monitor it um, this is the method that we're going to use to monitor it and this these are the and we're going to do it uh, the frequency and then the month and um, and for some things, like um, the example that, that she gave in the training, you know, things like financial planning and budgeting, she, it, sort of the typical um, method is, is um, well, the method is either internal or external. We, we do an external with um, financial planning because we have the auditor, so that's our external report. A report so we do that once a year um, and then um, they they were saying the frequency should be quarterly for that we get the financials every every meeting it's not really in any kind of monitoring report it's just here's some information this is where we're at um, we can continue to do that um, but we may want to say we also want that financial planning policy monitored on a quarterly basis um, and then ending with that external audit in the end. I don't know. That's something that the board needs to decide. working for you now seeing it's working for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then when you look at the annual agenda, which we'll be doing, so um, maybe what we can do is just move on to the next um, board item, which is the creation of the annual agenda, or at least re-looking at it and just um, Kind of setting out for this year what our work is going to be together and this is where it, it's um, when we kind of look at re-evaluating making sure we're doing the work that we need to be doing um, the annual agenda sometimes we sort of get there are some things in here that um, I think we spend time on, but it's not really a monitoring report. It's not um, looking at policy. It's it's sort of um, an information. We're getting information, but it's it's not necessarily um, 
focused information, I, sh I guess I should say, or it's not tied to a policy currently or to a monitoring report. Do you want to provide some examples of what you're saying? So like the senior profile. So that's part of the ends, but we get a, we get a, um, and it can sometimes run for quite a long time. Um, and maybe it's more, you know, getting that done in more of a, uh, in a format that fits sort of the ENDS monitoring, right? Because that's the purpose of it is to support your ENDS report. Well, this is, this is an interesting one. Uh, this is one that the board has traditionally wanted to, to see, and it, it, is, it is good data to see. But it is not anything that I have ever referenced in my ENDS monitoring reports. So that would make me wonder, I mean, right there. There's, there's data from that that's in the reports, but the senior profile as a document that you typically think about with a high school, that's not something I typically have, have gone on because the data is looking at other things um, at this point in time. Again, there are pieces that overlap, but you know, the AP scores we talk about because that's a little bit in there. Uh, but the senior profile is, you know, where, where kids are going to school and whatnot. So it's good data to have. I would call that more, my, my experience of it over the couple of years that I've been here is that's more of a direct, what do you, what do you guys call it, a direct observation or a, it's something that the board has requested. Um, and so mm -hmm. that's why it's been provided. That's, again, my experience for the last couple of years. Yeah, and I would like to Direct see it incorporated it. into the into an ENDS monitoring format. If if that's what if that's what if we're sort of looking at our district and saying, oh, we're doing great because our kids are going to these schools, then that should be our part of our ENDS report, not sort of a, a peripheral. Oh, here's a here's our report on the senior profile. And I I think that's a good idea, but I think you have to is that reflected in policy what you're requesting, or do you have a policy that you need to change to require it? Well, that would be in looking at our ends. Yeah. So when we look at that ends, that you can add another layer to the one that most closely relates to this, a, a more a more specific. Right. Yeah. And we may want to we may want to do that, and that's where that ownership linkage too is this important to our to our to the owners of our system? Yeah, no, I, I think it's a good idea. I'm just thinking through the policy piece with it because that's what we're talking right. about. Right. <laughs> well, and that's what that's what I'm struggling with is because we have we're we're getting we get these these extensive reports from administrators, and it's a lot of sometimes it's a lot of means. And sometimes it's just a lot of data, but it's sort of like, how does that link to our ends? And is this what our community wants? And then we as a board need to go out to our community and say, here's, you know, we interpreted these ends to mean you want this, or we're getting this result. Is this what you want yeah. or not? And, and we've got to figure out a way to better get that information in a, in a way that we can understand and the way that we can get out to the owners in to another say, one, this is where we're at. Another one that was similar to this, I don't know if it's still on here, um, was the, the elementary data law. That was something that I never referred to in an ENDS monitoring report, but that the board um, over the first couple of years I was here, we'd sit down in the uh, agenda meetings that the, the, the folks in the agenda meetings said that's what we want to see. Um, and so it was always on there. So right, that's why they came Right. Out. Not that, the, again, it's not that the information may not be important or anything like that, but that's just kind of how, you know, my experience of it, my time here. Right. Yeah. Well, to me, those are our outcomes. So if we're talking outcomes, we've got so many kids going on to colleges, we've got so many kids going in the military, we've got so many kids going to work and So many doing kids this. that dropped out, so many kids that stayed right. through for all four that, years. That to me is part of an ENDS report. Yeah. It's not just a, a informational, this would be great for the board to know. it Because that's how I want to hold you accountable. <laughs> you know, are we getting the results that we want? Yeah. And even with the 
elementary data wall. Are, how are we moving along? Are kids moving into proficiency? Because that's what they're, they're monitoring with that. No, that was, see, and there I am as a board member watching that presentation, assuming that's what they're showing me when they show me the data the, wall. The data wall is important. <laughs> um, and again, so, so now we'll get into a little bit of the, the research piece of it. They don't really do it anymore. Um, the data wall was important as they sat down in the discussions and talked about where they believed the kids to be. But it was based upon those discussions at my understanding at the time that I was observing that over there. It wasn't so much based on hard data because the assessment data wasn't being collected. It was based on the perception of the teachers that worked with the kids. Mm -hmm. That is important data and it, it's important to know, but it's, it's, it's subjective as opposed to objective. And so one of the things that I tried to do my second year here in trying to manage the ends and was to try to say, okay, let's, let's divorce ourselves from subjective data and move to objective data. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, it just, uh, it, it's just, it's more valid. Um, it's more reliable. Mm -hmm. At least that's the argument I made based upon the, the educational um, you know, that research. That was your rationale for, yeah. Your, yeah. for your interpretation. And we accepted it, so. So I'm not saying it's right, but mm -hmm. so I'm just trying to explain the, the context in the background yeah. behind it. Yeah, no, no, that makes sense. Um, okay, so we kind of got a little, a little so sidetrack there. Um, but they're rich discussions. They are, they are. So you'll see we have senior profile. Oh, because somebody asked, well, what's, a, what's an example? So we have the senior profile. You'll notice um, principal state of the school's data is in December. Um, and then, sorry, I have to, I have to look elementary at it. School. Yeah, elementary formative assessments, report cards, RTCC senior profile is in May. So again, that's, those have a, I'm assuming that if they have that number 3.4, that means that they're um, related, related to, to a, board, a policy. A board policy. Yeah. Yeah. So, to, those so, are the only ones that we would actually want to hear. So that's what I'm wondering. When there's not the number, is that additional work that's being asked that is not reflective of our work here as a board as I look at this? Yeah. I was like, well, there's no number. Yeah. It doesn't link back to what we... Are supposed to be here. They were, they were things, and again, the board wasn't strictly following policy governance at the time. Oh, it's okay, it's just, and so there were things that the board wanted to see um, just because traditionally they had seen it, and that's why those were on. So 3.4 is monitoring superintendent performance. Which obviously I think assessments and safety assessments are. So, so be so. careful, Lane, because we've got. Well, remember, RTT, I didn't. I didn't put, RTCC I didn't put a lot of these on. Profile the, is three point four. Yeah. We're assessing your performance on this, but it's not in any. Because the board sets the agenda, not me. Right. So again, that's what I'm saying is the yeah. board was asking for these things because it, they they wanted to see them, but it wasn't really related to policy necessarily or right. ends. Um, and that was a lot of the discussion at the time. It was kind of interesting because I was trying to switch things over to kind of the more objective measures, um, just because, again, research is more valid. Um, and that was a little bit of the struggle. But I think it happens in every organization. People were wedded to the traditional way they had done things. And so mm -hmm. I think that's what the dissonance was. Right. At the time. Well, and I think that's where, as we, so we're going to get the ENDS report in October. So that's going to be his interpretation of our ends, which are very, very global, leads him a lot of room to come up with a reasonable interpretation and a rationale to back it. And, and we need to look, and, and as long as he's He's provided it, but then, but then we might then want to go out to the ownership and say, "Okay, here's here's the ends. This is what we're getting. Do we want a little bit more 
specific. Or is this what you care about? Right, right. Is this really what we care about? So you can see we have a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm a little over, I will tell you that as I was looking at this and, and thinking about how we've been operating as a board, it's a little bit overwhelming because um, I think there's some work that needs to be done. I, I would say that, but see, I, I think again, you, you aren't comfortable necessarily with some of the, the data that is there for an ENDS report. No, one of the other pieces that had been traditionally relied upon um, had been report card grades. Mm -hmm. Research, you can, just about every article that you can read out of education at college and high school level is grade inflation. Again, because those final report card grades um, aren't necessarily an objective measure of a student's skills. Um, lots mm -hmm. of times, um, teachers, you'll have the kid that comes in who works their tail off, but the reality is, is in terms of the actual ac actual academic standards that they're supposed to be meet, meeting, mm -hmm. they're a C. But mm -hmm. the kid works their tails off, so they get that little bit of a, and so it may not be an accurate reflection of what the student has actually learned or what their true outcome actually is. And so mm -hmm. that was one of the reasons that you know I was trying to shift away from it. But it, it led to a problem in the end. You'll see that the ENDS report, right, I tried to simplify it. I hit the same, encountered the same issue that, that you're speaking of right now, is that that ENDS, that the way that you guys have it, it's all perfectly appropriate. It's, 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 it's what it should be. Um, but there were aspects of it that had never been worked on it in an objective way. And so I started to look at this and I said, there is no way that I can do, you know, the 11 or 12 or how, however many at the same time and take them from scratch to kind of a finished product. So I'm just going to narrow in on the big ones um, mm -hmm. right off the bat. And once those reach the threshold that I've set as an interpretation, then we'll switch over and we'll start working on the other ones. So the biggies were the science, the math, uh, the ELA, and um, special education, which is related to adaptability and put very objective measures on them, right, that you can compare across schools, across states, um, that aren't based on perception um, as uh, how we're measuring progress towards that. And so I focused just on those four. The others at this point in time in the last full summative ENDS report I did, I literally said in it um, that, you know, that second piece of it, if, if it's not being accomplished, then I have to state about when I think it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was um, how I kind of managed that. Um, but things are progressing on those four even during COVID, which was pretty in, in, impressive. Mm -hmm. um, but there's still another year or two probably before we're consistently hitting the threshold that's there. Once that happens, um, then I pull the cabinet back together and we say, okay. So the kids, you know, 70% of the kids are hitting that proficiency threshold um, regularly um, in those areas. Um, at this point in time, are we satisfied that given the resources we have that this is an appropriate threshold or should it be higher? Okay, you, if folks feel that this is the, the appropriate threshold for what we can accomplish with our resources, um, and at 70% it would be better than a lot of the majority of the state, um, is it time to move on now to um, the other ends that we have and, and, and focus more of our efforts there? And mm -hmm. so that's kind of the plan, um, mm -hmm. been the plan for a year or two now. Mm -hmm. So good, good questions. Not saying it's right, but that's what I came up with. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. um, so as people are looking at the annual agenda, um, are there some things that that you'd like to see changed? Um, or, or I guess I, what my question is: How do we want to move forward on this? Um, in terms of are there some things like uh, we have um, well we have the senior profile coming up it's it's information it's not related to monitoring ends 
it might be direct inspection. Direct inspection is usually looking at <coughs> stuff beyond that I presented to you to see right, if there's evidence. So if I'm if I'm if I'm telling you that for the past 15 years our scores have been the best in the nation and none of our kids are getting into college when you check the senior profile that's a direct inspection, right? <coughs> I, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, it's, I'm it's, not sure if I would call that a direct inspection. Yeah. But I, I'm But it's a, it, it's a way of cross-checking, <coughs> you know, the other things that I'm, I'm showing or asserting. Or, I don't know. I'm, think, I'm thinking through and processing. Thinking, the thinking through what, yeah. Um, and again, I think, I think uh, as a board, I think we need to think about our our ends and that ends report um, because that's that's what we're looking at and remember that the ends or the outcomes that we're looking for those are informed by our linkage with with the community and the owners of the district so you know again I, I feel like we um, I'm just looking at this agenda too and we say that we're gonna in October we, we review and discuss the ends when we review and discuss the ends wouldn't that be a relevant time to say if these are our ends these are the things that we want to see over the course of a year and this is how they relate to the policy and that would be an appropriate time to make that decision mm -hmm. as to what we want to see for ends yeah for ends monitoring mm -hmm. I think again Rachel's word of context, which is what I was looking for. I feel like say, talking about this tonight is, it's hard to have the context because we're not having a discussion around the ends mm -hmm. and saying, these are the ends, this is what we want to see, this, 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 and this relates to this policy, that's appropriate, this one's not. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we can set that ends monitoring agenda when we're reviewing and discussing the ends all in that context of what we want to see in a year. Mm -hmm. we would leave the ones that don't have a number on them for next month and then in October say okay we're discussing the ends and next September we don't need to hear about the senior profile or whatever yeah that makes sense so we'll do we'll we'll go with hearing the senior profile report and and we'll stick with sort of what we've got on here and to then see is this I mean I think that makes sense I mean I think if, if we're changes. actually going to be reviewing and discussing the ends at a specific time that we have set now rather than again like recreating the wheel we have this set in two months that's a good time for us to come to that meeting prepared to review and discuss the ends and then in conjunction with looking at the policy saying okay this makes sense you know having a senior profile in September no longer really aligns what we need so we'll take that off the Mm -hmm. agenda so and doing it all when it makes sense to do it right. rather than I think sitting now right. and saying okay well next month we want we don't want this in your profile but we haven't really had the time to see it in the context of what the ends are maybe we look mm -hmm. at the ends and we're like oh actually no wait it is appropriate even though it might not be directly related mm -hmm. so we'll we'll have Lane have someone come and and we'll ask that they present the senior profile to us for September is that what you're saying? I'm basically saying we stay with what this looks like right now, and okay. then when we are scheduled to review and discuss the ends, that's when we would discuss what we want the monitoring to look like, and then we can set this. Do we have to set this part of the agenda tonight? Uh, no, you'll set this in your um, meeting two weeks before. Right. So September we'll, so we can we'll ask somebody to... The, what is it, guidance counselors, or they, do you have the principals? Usually, come it's the there? principals come over. Um, it is. It is a document too. I mean, it's there, it's also a, a document. Um, yeah, if, I mean, if we're if we're getting it in the board packet, right? We get the senior profile. You should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's my question. If we're getting it, why do we need it to have it presented to us too? 
Is that, is that a valid question? Yeah, usually a, a senior profile is a document that guidance prepares. It's usually like a little brochure that you hand to prospective people that might be looking at the school so they can kind of see a little bit about what the outcomes are, what programs that you offer, um, you know, how many AP classes, that sort of thing. Um, where your kids typically go to college, what your SAT scores, you know, have traditionally been. Um, but it, it is, it's, it's just a summary. Um, mm -hmm. So it could just be as simple as a report, or you could have them come in and present about it. So it seems like if it comes in a paper form, then we don't need to have someone come in and, like, go over it again. Right. Or we do. Okay. It would save time. Yeah. yeah. Unless you have, the, the only thing is, is if you have questions. Well, you know, why was there a drop last year? Why, why, why is there an increase? Or, or, or what happened here? Or what does this mean? Um, you know, some, a lot of those I'll be able to feel, but I'm not as tightly connected um, to an individual building as, as like a principal or the guidance counselor. So that's the only piece that I would say. So is there a way to then have, if we did like a melding of that, of us to have the document to review and at a certain point when we're discussing it during the agenda, have that representative there? In case there's questions. In case there's questions yeah. or to be part of the discussion, but they don't necessarily have to represent all the, you know, 20 or 30 minute presentation yeah. on it. See, I think, I think in the past what, what Elijah did was instead of just giving you the document, because the, the board had wanted a presenter here, he just took from the document, put it into a PowerPoint, and, and, and talked, talked with the board kind of through the parts and pieces. And I don't think we always had the paper copy. No. No, not the handout. It would be great to have a paper copy, yeah. I think, just as a reference. Okay. But you guys have to be in, a, in agreement with one voice <laughs> in terms of what you want. If we want to switch from uh, the uh, presentation to the paper cup, we have to. We should vote I don't, on that. Yeah. I, I don't know if you necessarily have to vote because they have the right to kind of set the agenda. Um, but at right. least I think everybody should be at least want that. kind of in agreement or most of you be in right. agreement. I think the paper copy is helpful for us to review prior, but also <coughs> to, re to share in future if we're asked by somebody. And I do think having, um, you know, I just think about my work that we have, we provide all the material to the board beforehand. Yep. We're there to answer questions, but I'm not reviewing all that information with the board again because they've read it, yep. they've seen it. And so it just if they have questions that I didn't answer in a written form, they can ask me in that moment which I would think would make sense to have somebody here that can answer and then they're excused yeah. to, to go on their way. And that's so. kind of the same thing when you know, we're talking about you know, maybe a quarterly kind of financial monitoring isn't a bad idea. Uh, those would be meetings that I'd have Robin in uh, for. <laughs> you know, I've got a pretty good general. I'm, I know if there are specific things I'm worried about, I can go in and I can ask and um, Evaluate, you know, whether what I'm being told makes sense and, and, and whatnot. But if you want the real specifics and, and details in that, then you know th those would be meetings. Would be great to have Robin here. Plus, you're hearing it from somebody besides me, mm -hmm. right? And that, that's mm -hmm. a part of the oversight piece. So, yeah, very good points. I like that idea about just reviewing it and then have them basically available at that meeting to answer any questions, but not necessarily doing a full presentation. A presentation, so available for questions. <coughs> And, and we can always move it, we could move that item toward the top of the agenda so mm -hmm. they don't have to sit and wait until we get yeah, to that. So I just have a quick question. Is, um, do we need to have a motion that we're going to table the discussion of the creation of monitoring schedule until our October meeting? How this was written. It just says possible vote, doesn't it? Or does mm -hmm. it say? But it says the, the so it's not thing, the um, item is a Yeah, she's, she's kind of right about, because it says creation, so people who may have attended the meeting to hear happen? what you guys are deciding may have been expecting it to be created today. Um, so I think that tec technically she's right. So I would make a motion to table the discussion of a monitoring schedule until we discuss and review it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we also tabled the creation of an ownership linkage plan. Do you think we need to do that one as a vote as well? Did it say creation or discuss? Discuss, discuss, discuss the, cre the creation. Okay. So we'll discuss it. 
Okay, so we did discuss it. Yeah. We didn't. Okay. Yeah. Nothing there that implies you have a finished product. Okay. Um, and before we, I don't know if we're moving on from the annual agenda, but I just want to be sure to, um, I, I want to propose that we change the rhythm of when we meet um, mm -hmm. because of the select board meetings. Right. Yeah, uh, I do so have. So that's coming up in the next, <coughs> oh, that's in the I'm next. Sorry. Um, that's at 7 o'clock. That's board yeah, governance. Look at me no, so that's actually the next, the next uh, item. So, do you have a proposal for a day? I anything. Thursdays are fine. Six o'clock is fine. But if it's the second, the second Thursday, right? If it's the mm -hmm. second Thursday of the month, that's um, a problem. We're asking the public to because we want to um, encourage participation in local government, right? And we don't right. want to make people choose between the school board and the select board, yeah. and I want to put the select And board, so. just so you're aware, Brookfield, uh, Linda actually collected the data, which mm -hmm. was awesome. Um, Brookfield, they meet the second and fourth Mondays. Braintree is the first and third Tuesdays. Wow. So Thursday Thursday is not a bad day as long as it's not the second, second week of each month. How about the first Thursday? The first Thursday? Um, you like it? The first Thursday you like? If you do the first Thursday, you will not have financials, just so you know, because Robin has to have the month end before. I just throw that out. Yeah, so it might be, be too, it might be too quick. <laughs> You'll still get financials. They may just be a month month behind th that you're used to. Yeah. Uh, so do we have a proposal then? Somebody want to make a motion for? But I propose that we uh, change the monthly meeting day from the second Thursday to the first Thursday of every month. <coughs> okay. And do we have a second? Okay. Seconded by Megan. And all those in favor? Or any discussion, actually? Any discussion? Any other? Would that discussion? start in September? That would start in September. Yes, please. Any other questions or all right, we ready to vote? All those in favor? All right. All right. All right. First Thursday, six PM. I was gonna say are we we're keeping the time at six, that worked for everybody? It would make our R T C C meetings would be at five thirty then. Because it's a half Thank hour. Thank you for pointing that out. Is that every time there's a no there's no. um there's quarterly. There's quarterly. Is that on here probably? Yeah. It's on the annual. So there's one, there's one coming up in <laughs> September. We've got a September RTC, see um, November, February, and May are our quarterly meetings. So those would begin at 5.30 and then be continued by followed by our regular. So, and if I school. remember correctly, Felicia is hoping to bring in the other communities so that we would actually only have two board members being on that. She's, she has been reaching out to try to reestablish what's called the advisory board, which is typically um, who kind of meets during those sessions. I don't think she's had much luck. Mm -hmm. And I think COVID has is, is complicated that um, mm -hmm. even further. Yeah. yeah, I know she was trying to do that. So does that mean until? Until we can build that board so back. Build back yeah, yeah. 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 And, and their advisory, you have final say on, you know, what their recommendations and, and whatnot are the DOS board does. Okay. Yeah. Um, so everyone's okay with the six o'clock time still as it stands and the five three mm -hmm. RTC meeting? I think that's great. Thank you. And then the, the only the other works. piece on, on <laughs> there um, was location. In previous years, the board we rotate right from building to building to building and that fell apart during COVID um, right. right and so. if we had to go back to either hybrid or remote meetings would that be um, trickier at either of the other locations I don't believe so yeah. Yeah. the wireless is, is pretty darn good everywhere cool. had to be for last year <laughs> so what do we what's what does the board want to do in terms of location of the meetings do we want to continue the rotation or do we want to 
I'm going to be totally selfish and say that I appreciate that we want that we do the rotation, and I can understand that some of it is being able to visit all the schools. For me, I feel like it's 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 going to add a little level for me of like being like, oh, are we where are we this month? Are this month we're here, you know, like it's I like the consist I'm a consistent person. I like the consistency of meeting in one location personally. From for me, presentations that on the nights we have presentations are easier to hear. Mm -hmm. um, easier that's what? that's yeah. my only. Yeah, yeah just because it's a better setup. Mm -hmm. But that that that's my only piece. Typically, um, Brookfield, you'll get a pretty good turnout. Uh, matter of fact, in a lot of cases, when there's a turnout here, it's 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 mostly Brookfield folks. Um, Braintree, you, you get two or three. Um, you don't typically get a lot of turnout at, at, at Braintree. That would be the, the benefit of going to the places mm -hmm. is that it would be options for people option to, yeah. Eat, to come. Yeah, easier. So just trying to add, add info to the discussion. We're still having the, are we still offering the remote option? That's a decision. That's what the, the format, I think we had format on there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think so. And formats. We yeah. had so, we had great participation and it, granted yeah. there were, you know, tense topics that people really felt they had a stake in, but I, it makes it so accessible for people, for parents. Yep. And, you know, well, I, I wonder if that would make it easier to even then being in a location that's that's closer to where people live. If you can just pop on yep. for well, that, that's the beginning part, part of the meeting to express your concerns or whatever and then pop out if you want. Yeah. Um, the rotation wouldn't be as necessary if you chose right. to do that. That makes sense. I think logistically it probably makes sense. I, I think there is a disconnect from those other schools if we're not there ever. A little bit. I don't know. <laughs> what, what would be that playing devil's advocate? What would be the? Would there be any benefit to holding our meetings remotely? In general, just to foster that feeling of. It's going to allow more access if if you're a working parent that's got home with gotten home at the end of a long day with little kids at home that you can't leave alone. Um, they might not be able to attend a board meeting. Uh, might not be able to find the babysitter. Well, that's what I'm saying. What would be what would be? Um, that's the benefit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just like, the easier access um, mm -hmm. for anybody anywhere. Yeah. And that's what, like for us to all be to have hold all of our meetings remotely. Um, you could, I, I have an argument that at least during COVID, um, especially since we're working that, you know, all kids are back full in person, it's kind of role modeling for, you know, kind of the board to be here in person. Um, again, board decision, but that, that, that's an argument I would throw out for, you know, at least the board trying to be in person. Every and time. again, when well, we have to have someone here, correct. that would be me, yeah. right. you know, I, I, I would be sitting here running the room, running yeah. the room all. Mm -hmm. Because we have it is have open to, to the public, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. And that well, the the law was. I have to go back and kind of review the law too, because they put in a special kind of emergency waiver about that's how meetings could be run. I think so they, that's gone. Yeah, from yeah. 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 So you have to have one individual in the physical location. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I, the other thing that I that popped into my mind too is, you know, it would be nice. And that's why I wanted to do the ownership linkage plan is it might be nice to have on our ownership linkage plan, we'll go up to Brookfield Elementary or we'll go out to Braintree and it, and it will be an opportunity to connect with the community there rather than, and you saw how great I am at not asking questions or, or wanting to respond, you know, the public comment is really it's just the time for them to have three minutes to give a comment. It might, it might be nicer when we think about um, how we want to reach out to our, our owners to say, you know, hey, here we are with our ends. This is how well our kids did. And, and we're, we're looking at them and we're trying to make sure that we're doing the right priorities come you know come meet with your board and and give us give us some feedback about that but we and get then such it, better participation when we make it accessible 
for, I tried to bring a four-year-old to a school board meeting. As right, 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 right. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm still saying totally I'm the, at offering that remote option. That, that, that's totally yeah. aw awesome. Yeah, but, I'm, exactly. but I'm just saying if, if we're, you know, remember, too, that part of what we're, I think part of what people liked about having people show up is people had, they had things they wanted to say, but it's always hard when they have, even for me to sit across from Brian and have him say something and not be able to like give a response or, but really that's what our procedures say is, you know, you get three minutes to say your piece. We're not gonna, and, and if you look at the, you know, Vermont City of Lee, uh, whatever, I forget what their acronym stands for. But anyway, that's what public comment is. It's you take no action and you have to keep me honest about doing that. So, so it might be nice to, to um, incorporate that in our ownership. Just, I'm just planting some seeds when we think about doing that ownership linkage. Here we are, here's our ends for this, this past year. Um, we wanna hear from you. Are we headed in the right direction? Are we looking at the right priorities? Is this, you know, and we could do that at each one of these schools that allows a little bit more, you know, it gives you that sense of, um, and I'm not saying we would do that necessarily in a meeting, but we might do it in a separate meeting, in an additional meeting, but anyway. So what did you decide? So I think that um, we have to maintain the hybrid model moving forward for this year because I do think we we have had excellent participation mm -hmm. from folks giving them that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think us being in person is the right thing to do. Um, that's the expectation with school moving forward. That's the expectation of people going back to offices. Um, and I do think that after we did the strategic planning process and we engaged our communities, we have to go back to those communities. And having the meetings in the schools at different times, to me, does encourage that relationship in Brookfield, in Braintree, in Randolph, because we're not just a Randolph school. And I think it could be perceived, if our board always met here, that we're not um, reaching out and engaging with those communities. Mm -hmm. So that would be my recommendation. So, so keeping it so I think we need to move I think we always need to be in hybrid. person yes move around the different schedules like we have in the past elementary schools high school um, and always offer a hybrid a, re, a hybrid model for folks to call in if they want during that public session or to hear the work of our board how will we see that like if that was happening tonight would it be up on the screen yeah so and then again so the logistically it's a little more challenging I'm pretty sure it can be done um, I brain Brookfield it'll be okay um, if we do it in the multi-purpose room there but Randolph Elementary will probably have to hold them in the multi-purpose room as opposed to the media center mm -hmm. because they have a screen it's and whatnot that's I think that's built in at the cafeteria there yeah oh, um, okay. yeah. whereas you know downstairs you know the times we try to do presentations down there they don't really have a good setup or even a place to put the screen right, the projector right. on them yeah but yeah it would uh, the um, the training um, that we did, where we projected up here, and we the owl was sitting out on the table, but it means we got to sit kind of close together to be able to for the owl to pick pick folks up. That's all. Um, yeah. So I, I I think it's doable, and you know it, it, we may have some bugs to work out the first couple of times as long as people understand that. That's I, I don't think it's a bad I think idea. That makes sense too. Mm -hmm. It is a pain to have to deal with it with your scheduling, though. I know I get that too. Oh, I, I mean I definitely. I definitely understand the reason of going through all the towns. I think if you guys had a robust ownership linkage program in addition to being at particular places for our meetings to be less important, we're kind of using our meetings and locations as a, as a bit of a substitute for our, for our really robust ownership linkage. Mm. Well, I think, too, for me, the, the first, I mean, I've literally only been to one meeting in, at a different location. <laughs> that was right before COVID. So I've only, you know, I think my perception of the board is I've only understood it in, in the realm of, of the hybrid or remote or here. Um, and like you said, we have a such 
robust turnout online, but I do understand the reasoning that the legislators gave. So do we have a... And, and those, those were robust turnouts were because of the specific yeah. items. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I would not expect that that would be yeah. a continual thing on a normal Nor norm is no, three to five. On oh, a normal, you, yeah. People do yeah, make yeah, it more accessible yeah, when it, and people might, you know. I, yeah. I, I yeah. know that we're not going to get 136 people no. on a, in a meeting like this. I realize that. But um, I, I think having the option there and making it more accessible to anyone, and especially if Katya goes to the wrong school, then she can remove it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I agree that it, it is a good option to have. I think we should have it, but I'm just saying I think, you know, we had such a good turnout because of the topics, sure. not necessarily. Yeah, because of the beyond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know if I wasn't here, I wouldn't want to be sitting watching this meeting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever do you mean? <laughs> so it sounds like we're going to do a hybrid and we're going to move around. Do we need to vote on that? Well, it, is everybody in agreement with the moving around? Yeah, I think that's yeah. I think it's good. Yeah. So I think we do need to so vote on it because it's a change from how we're currently doing things. Yeah. So I move okay. to a hybrid and changing a rotating schedule of locations. Second. Okay. So any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So did you catch all that, Linda? We'll no. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so next, we um, we need to create a creation of the board budget, but we might want to table that until we kind of have an idea of do we want to. I can give I can give you a, a rule or? of thumb, and it, it will depend upon what you guys you're right identify as your. Um, need for education you know how much right. you want to bring in a facilitator you have ten thousand um, that kind of okay. has covered the needs of the board mm -hmm. so you know you had what two facilitators last year um, yeah. kind of cover you know covered the ten ten thousand so if you decide you need you know four meetings with a facilitator then you're gonna have to double it to 20 as a right. rule, rule of thumb. Right. well and Susan I mean we can keep it cheap with the with the owl to pull her in if we if we wanted to do that again. Yeah, but you uh, you had twenty thousand when I started. Um, historically, you were only using ten, so um, the board reduced it. Can I can I ask a clarifying question regarding the budget? Mm -hmm. um, when the board when board budget is spent, do we vote on that spending of those funds? You uh, in terms of your so, own training? Yeah. Um, I think if you're agreeing with one voice that that's what it should be spent on and that's what the board should be engaging its time in, I think it probably should be the vote. That's one that I can't say definitively. That's one we would ask PHO. <laughs> yeah. Because um, we do, that's one of the trainings that had been talked about that I think is needed. Some of, some of the stuff you got to vote on is very clear, some of it it's not. It's and it'd be nice idea. to have a little mm -hmm. primer. And he'd be I would think if we, if we stayed within budget, then the board could probably do the training as needed, as long as we which makes sense. Too. Kind of like the same thing as yeah. long as you stay within your budget, mm -hmm. you don't have to come to the board to ask for it. So it, it, logically, it would be that way if we stay within our ten thousand dollar budget. So I don't know if we have to have yeah. vote on it. If if you vote, the vote that you have to do is to establish what that yes the yes. budget yeah. the and, actual and budget as far as the individual specific. Trainings as long as we don't go over that ten thousand, yep. and then Kaja could set it up in the in the agenda meetings or or planning. Yeah, but that. I but I, and I agree. Um, and again, I, I think you you are probably right. Um, I wonder about you know if the board is committing itself as a board to that activity. If that's that's kind of more what I'm thinking. That's more what I was thinking. Yeah, like are if we're if we're choosing if we're deciding. To invest, best, to invest, best your time that, as as a board. Yeah, we should be voting on spending our yeah. finances. And I don't know the answer to that. Let's see. I'm I'm looking at what our policy says. Uh, and I'm I'm not saying this in any. <laughs> I just came up because I know that we 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 did not vote 
to spend the finances on the, pr the training that we just did. And so that was where mm -hmm. my question came up. Should that have been a board vote to, dis to decide whether or not we wanted to spend? Whether to use the brown dog or something or yes, another form. Or, um, and and the, um, knowing the, like, should we have, should we have a um, understanding of the funds that are being spent on that? If it's just about training, um, if when you voted in the budget, the understanding is that's primarily yeah, what it's used for, you're covered. Okay. Yeah. So if we voted in the 10,000 and the training was... And then said, you know, the 10,000 is for training, because now you're making a public statement to the community about what the money is being used for, because they are monitoring you, that we're right? They're your, they're your owners. Okay. All right, and that yeah. makes sense. You're using their taxpayer money the way that you said you would. Yeah, we're yeah, going real deep into it. I don't... Just thinking logically. <laughs> yeah, and this does, our policy doesn't say anything about. Well, that's maybe a little point that we can review. We review that policy. And I, I and I think there was something because even when I was there is something on the chair policy that I was like, oh, really? So, um, um, so I guess the question is, are we are we creating a board budget tonight? Yes or no? We're not, then we have to make a motion to table it to a future right. agenda. Right. Do, do we have a budget already? He's Is saying in the past we've used we, ten thousand. We've always we've always budgeted mm -hmm. ten thousand the last couple of years. Yeah. It had been twenty thousand because there were some extra things the board board was doing, but mm -hmm. that was before my time. My first year. Um, that maybe was when we were doing the consolidation work yeah. for the district. And the ten thousand is always earmarked specifically for board training. Yeah, yeah. And you'll see that all when I do the budget because um, you know after you guys have decided what you want, it's built into the budget that goes out for a vote to the the community. Mm -hmm. Um, so you'll see the amount that's in there. Um, you just have to tell me if you want to adjust it. Otherwise, I automatically build in the 10 grand. Right. Until you tell me to do something different. How much did we spend on this training? Did someone say that already? So it, the, the, all the trainings last year was probably about 12. Um, but they were, they were tra you had an additional training than, than the board had had um, in previous years. This is what our, our strategic planning thing? The, the last training was kind of an addition. Usually they only did one, and sometimes they did two. So the one that we just had in our retreat, you were saying was, was an additional. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it, and we paid for Winton out of the board that was That was the, the that's the piece. You, yeah. Because yeah. that fell into the strategic planning from the previous retreat. Yeah. I mean, it, is everyone comfortable with a $10,000 budget? Do we feel yes. like that would be enough? I mean, it's already in the budget, so. Yeah, and it's, it's uh, so the budget you're doing, talking about right now is not this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. It's next, it's right, a year from now. Right, right, the one. Yeah. And so you've got till January when you do the final vote on the final budget for 2022-23 um, to if change your mind. to adjust it. Well, okay. I make a motion that we set our annual training budget at ten thousand. I second. <laughs> Do we have any discussion? <laughs> no, you were ready. I was going to second. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So we created our budget. Uh, our consent agenda. We have um, the minutes from the June meeting which, boy, was a long time ago, feels like anyway to me. Did anybody see anything that was, um, I read through it, it didn't. I move to approve the minutes. We have a second. Second. Second, second by Megan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, so we have all of the reports. Lane, do you want to speak to your report at all? Uh, unless there's questions on the superintendents, uh, that was uh, a lot of the discussion about you know what the guidance had come down from the state was. Um, the fact is is that the guidance they gave was good and reasonable and rational. Um, but it did promote two problems that we don't have clear answers to. Um, and so we are still waiting for further guidance. 
Um, the reality is, is I don't think that we're going to get it. So operationally, um, I had a long discussion um, at the strategic planning session with the cabinet today. Um, we've put together, you know, what the plan is um, for the fall, just to be able to communicate something to the community about what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's that. There's that piece. Um, in terms of financial report, uh, if there's questions on it, this financial report is the year-end report, right? Our uh, fiscal year ends on June 30th, um, so this is the month of June, so this is the closeout for the year. Um, had a lot of uh, funding come in, obviously, from the federal government that covered a number of things that we had planned for. So you are looking potentially, once it's confirmed by the auditors, uh, of a surplus of about $1.4 and so, you know, the gut is, is to do similar to what we did last year. Um, as long as our reserves are healthy and we're in the middle of, um, based on, you know, what the state is expecting, um, creating a five-year facilities plan um, that kind of supports our educational mission in the ends. Um, but my guesstimate is, is that uh, given where we stand, most of that money will be applied probably to the next year, year's budget or to the next three years. Um, depending upon you know what's going to minimize taxes um, for folks as much as possible. Okay, so I just want to make sure I understand what you just said. So we are ending what we assume with an assumed 1.4 million dollar surplus. So the options now is that an operational or a governance decision as far as if the surplus is put towards a certain reserve or if it is put towards future budgets to lower the taxes. So the way, way that it works um, is if it's going to be applied to the next year to offset taxes, right? So the people, you know, it's 1.4 million potentially that people don't have to pay out of taxes right. next year. We just put it in when I give you the budget um, piece at the end of the year, say this is what you're doing, and then you would approve it on that January 1st that, yeah, this is appropriate. Um, if it's potentially going to reserve, um, I would tell you that as part of that budget vote, you know, you would be voting to say, hey, this amount of money um, is going into uh, facilities reserve, this amount of money is going into operational reserve, um, and, and that, and you also vote on that, you do that every year. And the voters have to approve those. And then you, you're, you're just voting to uh, on January 1st um, to approve what I've recommended or to say, to say no, go back and, and do something else. Mm -hmm. um, but then uh, that's so that it's kind of an official document that can now go out for the voters to examine before March 3rd because there's a timeline. They, they get to look that stuff over and ask questions about it. So and, but it's not question? official until January, uh, until March. Um, so the um, additional of that 1.4, is that a result of COVID funding? That uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's what it looks like at this point in time. Uh, again, this data is fairly fresh. I want to go in and dig a little bit deeper. Okay. We always get reimbursements um, for things that we have to plan for, pay up front, and usually that amounts to 300, 400,000 a year. That's kind of expected. Right. There were things that we planned for that we couldn't do, right, because of COVID. Because um, remember, we planned the budget a year in, in advance, and we were hoping things were going to be in a better state that year than they were. Um, and so you, you budget for it, you get the money for it, and then you don't have to spend it. So that's some of it. And then there is a significant amount of things that we paid for with um, federal funding um, right. that covered you know, what we had budgeted for. Because I'm just curious if any of that um, excess will have some sort of um, strings attached because it was a result of COVID. None of it does? No, the, the, um, the way the, the ESSER funding work, which is, we call it the COVID funding, you know, the, it's, a, it's kind of a reimbursement. Okay. They allocate it to you, um, and then what you do is you kind of tell them what you intend to use it for. So the money is there, we just have to tell them what we're using for and they approve it, and then it kind of reimburses us for what, what we're spending. So is it a drawdown? Kind of like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, that's why we know the amount up front. They've already allocated to us. We just, and it's like uh, ESSER 2 is a good example. Um, you know, we're allocated like 1.3 million, and so all the districts, what they did is uh, they did the recovery plan, started to talk about what was the best way to get the kids caught up in terms of what they fell behind on because of COVID. They went out and started spending that money uh, because we had general guidelines about what it could be used for. And now we're literally, so we're on the hook for the money, even though the government hasn't quite given it to us back yet. But when we put the 
application and following their guidelines and, and knowing that we kind of follow the, the guidelines, they will reimburse us. Yeah, so it's a kind of a reimbursement. It's a quirky, weird. So how are we having extra if we're if we have to spend and then get reimbursed? How are we ending up with extra money? Because in um, especially like with the uh, the ESSER one funding, which was to cover for uh, cover for extra supplies and a lot of things along those lines. Remember, we had to kind of plan a little bit for that um, in the budget last year, and then what ended up happening um, was that. The money came in from the federal government, so that covered the cost that we normally would have paid out of pocket um, for oh, a lot okay. of things. Okay. So we had had a budget that was there, but the money came in, and, and then we applied it to you know what we normally kind of would have paid out of pocket out of our regular budget. So, making me think back, on it. it's confusing. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, good questions. Okay. Any other questions on the financial reports or the principal's reports? Okay, um, and then we um, had some new hires. I had to come in and do some more signatures. Those, if you remember back in, I think it was in June, um, we gave Lane the authority to just fill those positions over the summer because he had many positions that he was waiting um, to fill. Um, and then just action recap. So before our next meeting and in our agenda meeting, um, we will be sending out some information on the modules to take a look at regarding ownership and ownership linkage um, and on monitoring and um, the monitoring reports in our schedule for the monitoring reports. And then um, education needs, I'm just gonna kind of, we'll, we're gonna sort of play that by, by ear. I guess our education needs, or at least the education that's gonna be in there is just the reminder to take a look at those sections of the training modules to be up to speed so that as we hit those things on the agenda, um, we can maybe move forward a little bit better. Um, and then we'll also use this current annual agenda to um, also uh, prepare for the meeting. So, although we don't have to do any negotiations with the unions <laughs> this year. That can all be tabled for a little bit. Oh, wow. that was confusing. Is that every so other normal. year, every Pardon? other year, or every. I uh, we've got it. So it's, two it's, year, a, it's a two-year contract. Two -year contract. Oh, that's right. We did. We this did. year we got yeah. a two-year contract. So Last year we only were able to get it one year, so we had to do. So we just went right into negotiations yeah, again. Three, yeah. it just I think it was takes three, three years in a row. Yeah. yeah. Right. I know nothing. But you guys all must know a lot about it. You had to do it a couple of years in a row. <laughs> Can I just ask a quick clarifying with our future meetings? Mm -hmm. um, because now we're going to have the September 2nd meeting. I'm assuming we're going to do our agenda planning a week earlier. Is that a correct assumption? Oh, wait. You've already you changed the date. The oh, so what's the next meeting going to be? Thursday. I know. So oh, man. You just, you, you, yeah, that's your agenda planning, you guys can determine as long as she has enough time to get, yeah. to get the paperwork up for the, the warning. How many days do you, do you, do you need ahead of uh, when, when the paperwork's done? on what else is going on, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming you prefer the two weeks, Linda. What's that? You, you, you like Yeah, I prefer weeks, two weeks. So we can make that work, right? Yep. I mean, so next Thursday, which is what, the 18th? 19th. 19th. That's next Thursday. Oh, Checks okay. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> you now you can't do it? I have a board meeting. Oh, so that's not, is that a, a yep. monthly sure. board meeting that's always going to be at the same time? Do we have to always do that on a Thursday? We, we could do it on a different day. You can do it any day you want. It would be nice if it's kind of regular, though, so yeah. I don't yeah. to put it yeah. on the calendar. 
It just yeah. it matters to Linda more than me. Can we do the um, like the two weeks of Monday before that? It's like the twenty third. So it'll be the fourth, third Monday. Third Monday. Third Monday. Or this is the I mean, is that regular or just before. this time? We'll figure that out. We don't have to waste time right now. Okay, so we'll t I'll chat. We'll chat. Okay, like I'm not there tomorrow. But um, are you there next week? Yeah. Only Monday. Okay. okay. Uh, no need for executive session. Unless um, you guys have something. So. It's all me. Okay. So I think we're a very respectful board. I did write little notes. Um, I felt like it was a quiet group this evening and that we were a little murky on our work and need more clarity moving forward. Mm -hmm. However, we, it was well attended. Um, I think everybody listened and we were respectful and courteous. Um, some areas that I think we need some improvement was the decision-making processes to be better understood and implemented. Um, and it says, the question was, the agenda was well planned to focus on the real work of the board. And I said, we're moving in the right direction. Go team. <laughs> uh, <okay. Yay. laughs> and then on the back, I said, we're getting there under the governing <laughs> principles. So there we go. That's All right. Good to say. Awesome. Thank you. Ashley. Thank you. You can enjoy right. my notes and my Thank you. So are we, we um, side comments. <laughs> I mean, we did pretty we well. All for so are we, uh, can, can we, we have a adjourn? motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn the meeting at yeah. 7.52. All right. Second. Second by Ashley. Seconded by Ashley. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Great.